Ina no sa mane shate ya Mane ni ana ni ana no sa la ba so ya ya E ya ya na ni ana no sa de ka sa ba no sa Ina no sa mano sa ya Kingdom come, kingdom come, kingdom come, thy will be done. He's the life that flows from the throne of grace. True nobility in life is knowing the Lord and walking in his way. The most glorious pursuit of mankind is walking in God's image and likeness. It is our utmost desire that you'll be richly blessed as you listen to this message from Living Scroll Ministry, a.k.a. It's the Bible Network. For more life-transforming messages, please visit www.livingscrollministry.org. He's the life that flows from the throne of grace. We just bless him and thank our Father for all that he's doing. Just bless him. Thank you, Father. We bless you, Jesus. We thank you, we give you glory, we give you honor. Thank you for what you are doing across the earth, across the nations of the earth. Thank you because you have called us to be part of what you are doing. Thank you. We cannot do anything for you. We can only do what you are doing. You can only do what you are doing. Jesus said, Whatsoever I see my father do. He said, That I do. So we cannot do anything for you. But the all that we see you do, we do. All that you have empowered us to do. These are the things we do. I will bless him. Thank him for all of the men and the women that have stood on this platform for the past years, standing for truth, for righteousness, and the eternal kingdom on earth. We are here for the purposes of God. We are here for the will of God on earth. Thank you. Jesus will bless you. When a man or woman leaves, and at the end of your life, you have not done the will of God. Our life is a wasted life. We live as people that will give account. Say, for we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ. To give account. We are men and women living as ones that we give account as stewards of the truth of God and the workings of God on earth. But we are stewards of the mysteries of God. The stewards. Father, thank you. Bible wrote that David, after he has served his generation by the will of God, slept with his fathers. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth, even as it is in heaven. Lift up our voice and we continue to lift up our voice. For your truth on earth, for your kingdom and for your ways. Only one, thank you. Father God, thank you. We receive strength. We receive grace. Again, why I am powered in your holy name. Our hearts are renewed. Our zeal is sanctified. 
and we consecrate our bodies and our strength to you. Jesus, thank you. King of glory, thank you. With them as Savior and friend, our hearts will burn for you. Carry a heart for your truth. And for you, worship. Thank you. Father God, thank you. Father God, thank you. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. And you have a moment of reflection that at the end of your life on earth, you are going to stand with God and before God, eyeball to eyeball. Money, this is one of the biggest burdens in my heart that we are going to see Him. Revelation 22 is a servant to see Him. You see Him eyeball to eyeball. And when you see him eyeball to eyeball, or your life on earth will come and be reflected in his eyes. This God that we say love us this much. Oh, this God, how we love calling your name. Oh God, you are my God. How we say all of those things, you look at him in the eye. And you look at your life, this is his expectation for you on earth. One man had a revelation. He had a vision. And he saw men who were before God. And they could not lift up their eyes and look up. They were looking down. And all of them were praying that for what did they waste their eternity? They were just looking. They were looking on the floor. All of those things that, okay, look at you now. Now, most of us are in our 20s and our 30s, 40s, there about. The things you were, you were a teenager. Those things that were heavyweight in your heart, how do you feel about them now? When you're a teenager, it looks like this is the end of the world. This is the whole of the world. You look back now, you smile. That is the same way you'll be looking back upon the earth. And you looked at your life. We have the privilege to correct that now. If there is anything to be corrected. Privilege. That is why the living life is a privilege. To get it well and to get it right. All of those things. You will see things as they are. As they are, this is it. That one day you stand before the Most High God, the Maker of heaven and earth, the Lamb of sacrifice, who left the heavenly world and became a human being. Why? Because of you. One that has done so much for you, you now be reflecting, what have I done for him? How did I live my life? This thing called for sober reflection. This is not noise. This is not about men. This is not about opinions of men about you. And then the most time we pass his own opinion about you. Praise the Lord. So life is serious. It's a very sober. It calls for sober reflection. Men like you see, there you now begin to see men like Elijah. Look at people like John the Baptist. Look at people like John the Baptist. Those men let go all earthly comforts. How can they give birth to you and head into the wilderness? You know, look at what he was, you know, clothes, you know, you know how we are particular about clothes. Clothes and food, he was not particular, but because of this in God. Look at men like Abraham. I was telling us in the morning, your own son, a boy about 15 years old, and God spoke to him in the night. He said, send him away. In Isaac shall your seed be called. He woke up in the morning, gave him a bread, bread and a cruise of water, put it on, on, the, on the wife, he guy and send them away and the Bible said they wandered in the wilderness. You think that man was sleeping? The very kind, gracious man that Abraham when Lot was taken captive, he went, he, he took arms to go and fight for Lot. This is his own son now, but the most I say, send him away. He sent the boy away. And the wife. Some of us are talking about sacrifice. He don't do small thing, you are calling it sacrifice. Now what will Abraham, which one would you want to say sacrifice in the life of Abraham? Which one? The sacrifice. Genesis 21. Send the boy away 15 years old. In the days of savagery, not now. If a 15 year old boy leaves your house, somehow you know it is well with him. And the mother. One warrior just carried the woman and killed him. You saw it in Abraham was telling Sarah, please, oh, please, please, please. It just happened in Genesis 20. Here we are, Genesis 21. Because they sent him away. Praise the Lord. 
all that God needs is our heart. That we want to yield and respond to Him. And go with Him wherever He wants us to go. And live the way and manner He wants us to live. Can you lift up our voice of consecration once again? That you want to consecrate, you want to surrender all. You want to surrender all? Father God, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Jesus, thank you. Oh, Father, thank you. To live for you and you alone. Why are you here? Why am I here? Why are you on earth? Why are you on earth? Why am I here? A lot of us have not answered that question. If you answer it, it will reflect in the manner that you are living. Living. When God becomes your overwhelming and overriding passion, your consuming passion, Father, we thank you. Blessed be your holy name. Call upon you in truth, in spirit, and from a pure heart. Take us and use our life the manner you want it. In Jesus' name. Don't put your hands together. Sit down and carry on us all up for it. As we take care of the blessing, and we'll be looking at uh, looking at daily fire. Amen. Well, I want to appreciate uh, want to appreciate uh, our Father for all of the brethren that have prayed and are eager and willing to pray some more. Amen. So they were ending our tongues for year 2023. And the tongues is, uh, is uh, the prayer we hold, worship, intercession, and governmental decrees, a fellowship we hold 10 days every month. And we'll be doing this since uh, year 2021, February. Praise the Lord. That's on this global scale. But we started doing it five years before that. Amen. Yes, and uh, we're doing five years before that. We're doing it in secret. We're not broadcasting it. We're just coming together to pray and spend the volume of time to pray. Amen. And but sometime 2021, February, we receive an instruction to make it a global prayer where men and women can join and then and then we'll pray together. But before then, we started since 2015. Amen. Praise the Lord. And so when we round up tongues on Sundays like this, we round, round it up with the blessing. We start it uh, on Thursday and then finish two Sundays later for 10 days. Praise the Lord. Last month, what did we take during the blessing? We spoke about yielding. Yielding, the message is available online. If you are interested, you can check it on YouTube. Yielding. Amen. Yielding. Uh, type yielding and then type my name, David Abubakal, is there. So we'll be looking at uh, daily what? Fire. Fire burns. And fire burns everywhere. Praise the Lord. Where conditions are right for it. Fire burns. And burns everywhere. And then let us underline this word. Where conditions are what? Are right for it. Set the conditions and then fire will burn. Praise the Lord. So there's no problem with fire. Fire burns and burns everywhere. Where conditions are right for it. And set the conditions and the fire what? Fire will burn. And the interesting thing is that God will not set the condition for you. Praise the Lord. God supplies the fire, but man will set the condition. Praise the Lord. Remember the days of Elijah. Elijah on Mount Kame. That's 1 Kings chapter 18, 19 to 24. Where he told them to call, gather all Israel to Mount Carmel and then gather the 450 prophets of Bar and the about 400 prophets of groups. He said, Let them lay the wood, let them lay the sacrifice, let them put everything together, and then let the fire come down. The, let them call upon the name of their God, and he will call upon the name of the Most High God. The interesting thing in that is story is that uh, Israel. And Elijah told them that uh, how you are divided between two opinions, they kept quiet. Amen. Say, if people don't see fire, they will not serve your God. Fire. That's the persuasion that persuades men's are truth. He said, Your word is like fire shot up what? in my bones. Men ordinarily will not turn. 
When Elijah told them, he said, Israel did not answer. Elijah came unto 1821. Elijah came unto all the people and said, How long shall you shall you hold between two opinions? If the Lord be God, follow him. If Baal, then follow him. And the people answer him not a word. Then Elijah said uh, they should go and set for uh, let them therefore give us uh, two bullock. He said, let them go and set altars. Then Elijah said, verse 22, unto the people, I and I only remain a prophet of the Lord, but Israel, but Baal's prophet are 450 men, and there were other uh, 400 prophets of the groups. Verse 23, first King 18. Let them therefore give us two bullock, and let them choose one bullock for themselves and cut it in pieces and lay it on wood and put no fire under and i will dress the other bullock and lay it on wood and put no fire under and call you on the name of your gods and i will call on the name of the lord and the god that answers by fire let him be what god and all the people answered and said what it is where what spoken the one he said the first one they didn't answer praise them and then what happened then god supplied the fire from heaven in Leviticus chapter 6, praise the Lord. In Leviticus chapter 6, you say the priest, the priest must keep wood there every what? Every morning. What if the priest wakes up that morning and he's too tired to put in wood? What happens to the fire? Eh? But like, what happens to the fire? It will not burn. But the more they supply wood, the more what? The more the fire will burn. Many times we'll say, okay, we are, we are getting cold, we are getting uh, down, we are getting this, we are getting... It does, it does not, it's not with God. The same principle, Jesus did it. When the conditions were, was right on earth, the Holy Ghost came. In John chapter 15, verse 3, he said, you are already clean because of the word that's spoken to you. He purified them, emptied them, and he said, go and tarry. That one, that one symbolized hunger and desire. He said, go and wait, go and tarry in the upper room. But he has already purified them. When they waited there and then the Holy Ghost, the Holy Ghost fell from heaven. Set the conditions and what? Fire will burn. If you don't supply wood, the fire will not burn. Praise the Lord. Fire is not selective. I say, set the condition and to what? To burn anywhere. Not because of your name or the background. Or the heritage in your family, your spiritual lineage. Praise the Lord. And then sometimes we have a, you see those fire that burn and quench. Those fire that we burn, and after some time to what? It will quench. That fire is not enough. When the fire is sufficient, it will not quench. Rather, it will spread itself. So when we pray, God set me on fire, then you will have to supply the conditions for that fire. Praise the Lord. By the things that you what you do. Let me take it again. God set me what? On fire. Who will supply the condition for the fire? You. And then God will what? God sends the fire. As the power of truth. Praise the Lord. See, John the Baptist was a burning and what? And a shining light. He was burning and he was shining. And you see the manner of life that he lived. The days that were in now. You have to be a man of fire, a woman of fire. No, you not survive the times. Sufficient what? Fire. You have to be born in. You won't survive it. So all those uh, epileptic uh, prayer life, where you pray at will, anytime you just want. All of us are on one platform that we talk now. Is that you are on one teaching on one WhatsApp platform, or you are in one place, or you are in one uh, local assembly, or you are in one group, you are talking, you are talking there, but you know yourself that there is no fire inside. No strength. Strength to abide and to stand with God. When the Holy Ghost comes and He wants you to pray and you are in prayer, He wants, he wants you to be there for six hours. After one hour, one hour, 30 minutes, you are giving up. God is coming, God is coming, but you cannot supply the conditions for the fire. Or He wants you to avail yourself. He wants you to just be there. But here you are, strength has filled you. Praise the Lord. The place of light where you stay in the world deep inside and then things are breaking forth after you stay small you know our strengths are failing the conditions are not right for fire that's why we're saying this thing and try to provoke and stare 
ourselves as we journey into 2024. You don't spread fire, fire spread itself. It will burn inside you. And that fire that is burning inside you will take you to places you want to set on fire again. Ezekiel saw a river. You know, first of all, it was to his ankle, right? It was to his knee. He was walking in that water. He said, after some time, he couldn't walk again. It was his ankle, right? Ankle to his waist. After that time, the river carried him. The fire of truth, fire of light and presence. The present. Jesus told Peter, when you are still young, when you still have strength, that's your own strength. He said, you went everywhere you wanted to go. But he said, when you are old, you will just stretch forth your hand. And another what? Another will carry you. You see, complacency can easily set you. You are weighed down by a lot of things. A lot of things will weigh us down. You remember that parable of the soul? I said, the cares of this world. There were not things that were bad. He said, the cares of this world just weigh. And then in the place of your consecration, that means the things you have seen you be doing for God. After you do it small times, the, the Satan will come and weary you down. You know, there's nobody there to clap on for you. Nobody there to applaud you. Nobody there. So your adrenaline is not running high. Because men are not sharing you. You are just doing it in the secret of your life. You are just there doing certain commitment. Just doing it, doing it. After some times, you just, you just gain weary. You know, what is there? Nothing is coming forth. This thing that I'm doing, am I, am I sure? Or let's go and do other things. Do other things. I say set the condition and what? And fire what? Fire with burn. The Holy Ghost had never come to earth before. To indwell men. But Jesus set the conditions right and he came. Praise the Lord. You see where I was born? I want to talk about our, our warfare. You know why he needs to burn? You see the... the God, the God who are serving is so deep, expansive. The devil is not a small boy. Praise the Lord. That's why a lot of you don't survive this warfare. This warfare. I will show you something very interesting in the, in, the, in, the, in the weapons of our warfare. But before then, let me say this. In the days of uh, Joseph, the devil wanted to, to stop him. You are familiar with that story. Nobody was there, was all alone, was suffering, taken away from his father's house. In all those discouragement, he just give up and everything. A great destiny that this young man was carrying. The devil wanted to use his brother to kill him. He just outrightly killed him. You know, he can't do that. He couldn't do it. You know what he did? He journeyed, he traveled far, and then went to wait for Joseph in Potiphar's wife. Praise him. He's consistent all through scripture. He journeyed far to go and wait for Joseph. Where? Potiphar's house. He took the warfare higher. All those and the brothers want to kill him. This one, like, okay, you know, God raise up uh, deliverance easily. Just say, I don't have to do anything. They were, some people were planning to kill him one side, and that part of set of people were trying to deliver him. Joseph does not have to do what. But this one, the devil will bring the warfare to you. If there is no fire inside, you won't survive this one. Praise the Lord. Just like the same way he waited for Adam and Eve in the serpent. Right? Yes. He waited for them in the serpent. He couldn't kill Joseph, I say, through the sword of his brother. So I say he traveled into Joseph's future to wait in Potiphar's wife. What was the job of the serpent? He's showing us our biggest warfare now. The job of the serpent, serpent in the days of Adam and Eve was simple, was to stir up desire in them. How do you win that kind of warfare? When the devil comes to battle you, he will come to battle you, he stirs up desire inside. That was the job of the serpent. He did, he, did he plug it and give them? Hmm? Serpent, uh, doctor. Did he plug it and give them? He just stirred up desire inside. That's the, the biggest battle I've seen in scripture. The same thing happened in the days of Cain. Genesis 4 7. He says, Sin lies at the door, right? And his desire is what? Is to have it. Put desire inside him. Who went to kill? Uh, is it the devil that went to kill him? Eh? Who was angry? Where all those things, where was it coming from? Who sponsored it? Is it warfare? The devil could not kill, just, uh, kill David in the battlefield by the sword of the Philistine or the sword of, of uh, Israel's king, King Saul. The sword of King Saul could not take down David, nor the sword of the Philistine. What did the devil do? He traveled very far 
to go and wait for David in Bathsheba. Oh man, praise the Lord. In what we, you see, in what we, uh, Ephesians four twenty two, you say that you put off concerning the former conversation, the old man which is corrupt according to the deceitful laws. You see that word, according to the deceitful word, lost. And when you hear that word lost, it's very very big. You know, most time you just go to sexual temptations and trial. This loss is what you saw in the temptation of Jesus Christ. The devil was on that mountain and was trying to stir up desire inside the heart of Jesus. You see this thing? So the sexual loss is one aspect of it. Was all on that mountain. Just the same thing the serpent did. The serpent job was to stir up desires inside the life of Eve. The same thing on that mountain. Who stir up desire inside Jesus. No matter the vision that in fact on that holy month where you are seeing vision where you are seeing vision with god he will come down he will come to you and try to corrupt you in that city i'll tell us why ephesians 6 did not in fact the listed prayer last as the weapons of our warfare it was not number one it was not number one it was what number last and even there they spoke about two kinds of faith and even two kinds of war because of this thing the devil, after David recovered, uh, uh, the one he did in uh, another example again, David's son, Ammon, he was looking for a way to destroy the household of David. You know, God said, I will build you a house. How did he do? He said, what I'm saying is simple. Satan will sponsor, he said, sin, ultimate strength is to sponsor desire inside. He's more powerful that way. To sponsor this. Ammon! Just stood up one day, saw the sister Tamar. You know, the de- God said that he's going to, uh, David went to number Israel. God was angry with David for certain things he do. Okay, no, not that one. David, after that thing with uh, Beshua, God said, I'm forgiving you, but I'm going to leave a fire too in your heart. Look at what God said. Then look at how the fire came. The boy, the boy just stood up. He just loved his sister. He just loved her to death. <laughs> Amen. Just love the sister. Second Samuel 13. Love the sister to death. He now told his friend, the devil now position one young man. His friend too says, Okay, pretend. Let your sister come and serve you food. And then when the sister came, he locked the door and then slept and forced her and slept with her. What did the Bible say? He said, as soon as he finished sleeping with her, he said the way he, the hatred he had for her was more than the love that he had for her. But how did that fire start from? Sponsor what? When he said, guard your heart with what? What diligence? But out of it come the issues of life. See that warfare. It's easy when you are binding something somewhere there. Bind, bind, bind. You know, this wish, this wish, this that. They are true, they are dead. But this thing has degree. This thing has level. Praise the Lord. You will carry yourself and you carry yourself there. That's how it works. After the response of things inside. Praise the Lord. See, through desire, the evil one will shut down your strength. And shut down your discernment. This thing called lust. I use a, sino, a simple synonym for lust is desire. You say, love not the world, the things that are what? In the world. But all the things that are in the world, the lust of the eyes, right? The lust of the flesh and the pride of life. The desires of the flesh and the desires of the eyes. Praise the Lord. Another classical example. See men that could not fall in the battlefield. See where they fell. You see the fire we need for this day. You see the, the issue. You see the problem that God had in the Old Testament was idolatry, right? Her man's heart turned to idol. But the issue in the New Testament, you see the corruption that is in the world through what? Through loss, through unbridled desire. God according to the ministry, but your desire will be different from his own desire. That's all. You will do the ministry, but you run with another desire. You will do it. The devil, when he came to tempt Jesus, did not tell him, leave the ministry. Don't follow God. Don't be a minister. Don't be a messiah. But be a messiah. He gave him an offer to be another kind of messiah. That is it. He said, all of this, I will give you all of this kingdom. You see, be the messiah. But you get it another way. Praise the Lord. In Numbers chapter 22, we know the story. Numbers 22, Numbers 23, Numbers 24. The days of Balaam and Balak. When Israel was coming, they say the way they were coming, there was no force that could stand them. Build seven altars. Balaam. Balaam told him, build seven altars. 
he built all the seven altars. He saw the same thing. He said he had the strength of a unicorn, right? I do not behold iniquity, what? In Israel. He said there can be no divination against what? And he said, okay. Then he switched on to another wisdom. Praise the Lord. Balaam sat down and taught Balak. You know, he couldn't, he couldn't confront them with might. This one now, you, are, they, you will rise up and do it. Balaam! Balaam taught Balak. Should throw beautiful women to the camp. What overcomes a man is the man's desire. So the devil will just come and follow that line. The devil will not overcome you with strength. He will overcome you with enticement. When we say, let's consecrate our heart. Let our heart burn. Let it burn every draws. Let our heart be ostracized from the earth. Anything here? When you read scripture like the heaven is my throne and the earth is my footstool. It's not only the footstool of God. The, heaven, the earth is God's footstool and the earth is your own footstool too. And that is why you prophetically match the earth every day to do that. God said to him that overcome in Revelation 20, 3, 20. To him, 2, 20, 21 there. But I said to him that overcome, we sit with me where? On my throne. You sit with God on, your, on the throne and the earth will be your footstool too. So there is nothing to glory here because of the earth and the... Uh, he said, Denmark, Denmark has forsaken me. Having what? Having loved this present world. What happened in Denmark? Satan sponsored desire inside. You see where Paul said that I put mail my body. I put it under. So in Numbers uh, 20, look at 25 now. After all those encounters, after they went back and changed the and changed the context of the battle. Balak, look at. Okay, before you go to Numbers 25, go to Revelation. See, the book of Revelation, and God came and made reference to Balaam. Revelation uh, chapter 2, verse 12. Unto the angel in the church in Pergamos, right? Unto the Revelation 2, verse 12 to 14. Unto the angel of the church in Pergamos, right? This thing says he who has the sharp sword with two edges. I know your works and where you dwell, even where Satan's seat is. And you hold fast my name. And has not denied my faith. Can you see it? Even in those days where in Antipas was my faithful matter, who was slain among you where Satan dwell. Verse 14. But I have a few things against you, because you have there them that hold the doctrine of Balak, who taught Balak to cast a stumbling block before the children of Israel, to eat things sacrificed unto idols, and to commit fornication. You see, Balak? He taught who? When they could not overcome on the seven mountains, they said there's another mountain. Let's climb the eighth mountain. If we can't take them down from seven mountains, we will take them down from the eighth mountain. Numbers 25, verse 1. Israel dwelled in Shittim. That's after Numbers 24. You know the story in Numbers 22, 23, 24, right? Where God said, where the Balaam and Balak story, they couldn't overcome Israel. Verse 1. And Israel abode in Shittim. And the people began to commit war done with the daughters of what? Moab. And they called the people unto the sacrifices of their gods. And the people did eat and bowed down to their gods. This is the view that God was talking about. I did not behold iniquity. Uh, there is no divination. There is no shout. He said, the shout of the king. Look at what they were doing. They themselves now turned and they became the enemies of God. Through what? Desires. And they called the people, okay, verse 3. And Israel joined himself unto Baal, what? Pure. But pure and the anger of the Lord was kindled against what? Who is fighting Israel now? Who is fighting Israel now? You see the wisdom of the wicked one. He will be your enemy. If the enemy in the context that what he wants to achieve in your life, he knows he cannot overcome you. You know, you are a New Testament believer. Uh, you are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. What he will do ultimately is to turn you and God to start fighting. Yes. After that, after they ate that tree in Eden's garden, them are who were fighting. Eh? Them are who are problem. Yes, them and God. He will turn you and then turn you, you and God will face yourself. Through what? Your desires. This time now, okay, go and look at uh, that, where that Revelation say. <laughs> Revelation say, Revelation 2 we're reading. We'll stop at 14. Then look at 16. That's in Revelation 2, the church in Pergamon. He said, I have this thing against you. The do, those that hold the doctrine of Balaam, who taught Balaam to put a stumbling block before my people. Look at what God told them, verse 16. He said, Repent, or else I will come unto you quickly, and will fight against you with the sword of my mouth. 
You see the devil that is fighting you now? Eh? You see the warfare? So when is the, you think it's the devil from morning to night, he said, take it to yourself. He said, God said, I will come and I will fight with you with the sword of my mouth. So if the most high is the one that is standing as your opponent in fight, how are you going to fight? Eh? Which scripture are you going to quote? Which word? Which word are you going to use to overcome it? How are you going to do the binding and the casting? There is only one word there. Repent. Repentance. Ecclesiastes 10 verse 4. It's a yielding, pacify great anger. Yielding. He said, when the wrath of a king rises against you, what do you do? He said, by yielding, pacify what? Great anger. Ecclesiastes 10 4. If the spirit of the ruler rise up against you, he said, leave not your place. For yielding, pacify great what? Offenses. He said, repent now. So again, I take it, the evil one sponsored desire in Potiphar's wife. That desire that she had for Joseph. Think it's ordinary. You just love this young boy and you too, you think you are, I'm handsome. You, know, you go and look at the mirror. Every boy, everywhere. <laughs> you, know, you know, Satan has sponsored a lot of things. Eh? So you are too beautiful. That's why everywhere, everywhere I go. Eh? Joseph, that desire was sponsored. I'm on! David's children, that desire was sponsored. And then look at the one of Balaam and Balak, right? It was what? It was sponsored. I say, sin. We bring desire, we sponsor desire in us. I put it, I made reference to Genesis 4 7. Let me read it. God told Cain, if you do well, shall you not be accepted? And if you do not well, sin lies at the door. And unto you shall be his desire. You say, but you shall rule over him. Now, let me read the uh, Romans. The sin sponsored desire in us, seemingly harmless desire, but the serpent is hidden within those desires to come and what? Bite you. Bite off your destiny, God. Seemingly innocent desire. You see, when we talk about this, it's not your way, just follow God's way. Not my way, but His way. When we insist on His ways, not my own. That's our safety ground to walk in His way. To desire what God wants. What God wants for you. You just set your desire on it. You know, it's, you know, it's so easy now. These are, these, these are the way. Even You know, it's easy. So, have so many places can sponsor desire. When you are preparing for marriage, you start come and start sponsoring what? Desire. You have your checklist. You have this one. You have all of those things. Yeah, that's how it works. He will, you are speaking in tongues, but the devil has taken you. That's it. He has taken you. When it comes to looking for job or looking for this one, they just praise the Lord. And that's why we must close our eyes in the natural so that we can see us properly, properly in life. All these too many analysis. Look at Romans 6 12. Let not sin therefore reign in your mortal body that you should obey it in the desires thereof. In the desires what? Thereof. Now, let me flip on to the other side. Ephesians chapter 6, verse 14. God talks about the weapons of our warfare. Just explain one day, then we'll pray. When we say fire, all this grammar was speaking about fire bomb. We are talking about the truth of God. Let his truth, his, you know, he says his word is like fire shot up in my bones. Let the truth of God burn in your life. Let God burn inside. In the morning, God. In the afternoon, God. In the evening, God. In the midnight, God. In the dawn of the day, God. What should I do in life, God? How should I go about it, God? It's after some time, we just grow weary. If you travel on the pilgrim's path, you've been there for the past 12 years, 13 years, 15 years, you just become too acquainted with the path. You go and you go to prayer, you know you are not praying. You just speak some tongues for 30 minutes. Your mind is not there. Your concentration is not there. Purpose is not there. You are not praying like one that is being heard by the Most High God. You are not praying as though seeing Him that is invisible. Is that not the life of uh, Moses? You see, he persevered. You know, as though seeing Him that is what? Invisible. When you go to pray, do you pray with the consciousness that God is your audience? That you are praying to the King, the Most High? You know, it's time to pray now. Pray, hey, hey, before sometimes I even jump. Hey, you jump. Okay. Anyhow, anyhow, 
because we have been on this journey for so long and we think we ourselves have now become the journey you are not the journey he's the journey he said follow me and i will make you when somebody come to harass you tell them i'm the daughter of the great king do you know my father let them know i'm a son you cannot toy with me we are not beggars and paupers on earth and that's how we live like paupers forgetting that the earth is your what it's your first two. you just see a man drive a 2020 uh, 20 30 jeep in 2023 your body is shaking already forgetting that the whole earth is your first two. and you prophetically mash the earth every day yes demonstrating the the lesson the truth in god that the earth is your first two. as he is so are we in this world heaven is my throne and the earth is what my first two. Isaiah 66 verse 1 and then he calls you and I that to him that overcome it. We sit with me where? On my throne. When you sit on that throne, the earth becomes a full stone. You see why those men were ready to give up anything on it. In, in, in Hebrews chapter 10, he said they, they, they flogged them. He said they took their property. He said they were rejoicing and rejoicing and counting themselves worthy to suffer for his name's sake, having lost all their properties on it. Lost pop everything on it. He said they were rejoicing because they know that in the heaven they have a better substance. Scripture says our citizenship is where? It's in heaven. Some of us value the citizens of some other country than our citizenship in heaven. You are ready to compromise truth to get the citizen of an earthly nation and compromise the truth of the most high God just to get it. Hey Lord, have they not sold their best right? It's, it's not about what you are thinking or saying. It's God that judges from heaven. Many, many have sold their birthright. Many have gone into so conjure marriages and be sleeping with people. So that when they after they finish the whole process, they will now repent and go back to God. Men and women that have sold their birthright. It doesn't matter whose name you are calling. Salvation is not saying things with your mouth, it's you have believed with your heart. If you have believed with your heart, there are certain things you will not do. You won't do them. You say everyone that call upon the name of the Lord, let them depart from what? iniquity. He said the foundation of God stands sure. He knows the people that what? Are his. You don't number people for God. God numbers his people. Numbers his people. Ephesians 6 verse 14. We start from verse 14 or let's say the weapons. He said put on the verse 11. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wise of what? Of the devil. He says spiritual warfare starts from having a pleasing relationship with God. That's where it starts from. The first war you will fight is to fight it to have the what? A pleasing and a sound relationship with God. That's the first one. And when the devil is fighting you, he's fighting you to bring you this same spot so that I can desecrate this spot. You don't have the relationship with him. You have God stand as your opening. Warfare. Oh, not that they are stealing your car. You're, you're, you are not getting that contract. Any money you get, you just spend it anyhow. The first thing we do is to turn you and God as opening. He did it in Adam and Eve. When God was passing that judgment, when he came to, they were mentioning the serpent. God judged the serpent, but go and, go and check the frequency of that judgment. When God, when God came, when God was judging, is this, uh, he didn't mention the serpent. After he said, because we have done this, after he gave his soul to him. But when God came to, to, to Adam, because Adam held the staff of authority, God did not mention the serpent. See, because you have listened to your wife. He mentioned the serpent. And when God was judging them, go and read it very well. He spoke, uh, you know, the more, the more, the less God speak in judgment, the better for you. You know, God spoke for six days and six days of creation. Imagine if He has spoke for 14, 14 days. That means will have been, this earth will not be like this. We will have been seeing different things. They want it. So when God was speaking that judgment, I think He spoke to the serpent in one verse. Just once, one verse. He spoke to Eve in two verses. But it came to Adam, He spoke in three verses. He spoke more. He spoke more. Praise the Lord. And the more God speaks in judgment, the heavier the weight of what? Judgment. That's why we preach the message one, new wine. New wine, right? During a contact five a meeting. That in the in the judge, in the eternal judgment to come, man will be judged more than Satan. Yes, to whom much is given. Satan was not made in the image and likeness of God. Satan was never given the Holy Ghost. Man will be judged more than Satan. All this, any small thing says the devil. He says, the devil, you are just giving yourself that. 
Say, put on the efficiency, put on the whole armor of God, that you may be able to stand against the wise of the devil. For we rest to not, can we read it together? For we rest to not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Therefore, take unto you the whole armor of God, that you may be able to withstand in the evil day, and having done all, to what? To stand. Stand therefore, having your loins get about with what? Truth. And having on the breastplate of righteousness. The first people mentioned there is what? It's truth. The word of God was mentioned twice in the weapons of our warfare. It was mentioned as a sword, right? When you use it to cut off the neck of the enemy. But before they mentioned that one, the first reference is what? Having the loins of what? Your mind. Get about with what? Truth. The word of God that works inside you to purify, to sanctify, to set you aflame, to set you on fire, to set you burning and going for God. The word of God that comes to you, that works in you, works in you to will and to do of his good pleasure, that works in you that you are able to yield and respond to God. You see, that's the first word. That, you see, that's the first word. That's the first word in, in, in our weapon of our warfare. That's the first work. When you are able to hold God. When the most I stand, you are able to stand with him. When he walks, you are able to follow him. You see what warfare what, what starts for? You know, binding the devil, this one, you get, you get to that later. And that's why I say prayer was mentioned last. Was it mentioned first? Hey, prayer, because prayer itself must rest on certain foundation. Is it prayer that God will born again? Is it prayer? He said, with the heart, what? Man, believe what? He said, what started for me? So he said, having your loins get about with what? With truth. You see where our warfare, where our warfare starts from? The truth that yields to God. The truth that responds to God. The truth that says, Abba Father. Even when you are going to the cross to be killed. You see, some of them, uh, they refuse to accept uh, deliverance, right? Hebrews 11. So that they can obtain a better resurrection. They were tortured. Having your loins get about with what? Truth. Some of us cannot hold truth and accommodate truth. That's the first fire that must burn in your heart. Your loins get about with what? Truth. That's the first time you see the word of God there. Before they mention the same word of God, now, the word of God now, that's uh, two sides of the same coin. This one now is walking inside you. When you can stand with God, stand before God and carry God. He said that Christ may dwell in your heart by what? By faith. To carry him. God is a body to carry you. He said, you always that he said, my body is light. God is a weight. How do you meet a man and say, send your, send your son out of your house? Uh, he's not, okay, even if he's not part of the covenant, let him stay in the house now. A 15-year-old boy, send him away. Just send him away, Genesis 21. He gave them water. A very rich man. Abraham was very rich. A very rich man just gave them bread. He didn't even pack silver and go to give them. He put them and he sent them away. God is a weight. And then that place, the devil now, when God is brooding on, you know, he says he walks in you to, to will, Abby. When he, this guy, you know, there are times God speaks his will to you, spoken word. But there are sometimes God goes deep inside you. He starts doing some workings inside by experience, by all kinds of so that your will becomes his will. And that one, you don't like it. Somebody say he doesn't like it. Some people say they can never. I know some men those times, you tell, you say there is no way you can never marry a lady that is dark. That should be yellow girl. You know, they, you know that those ones, Satan has finished his work. Eh? See, the lady has to be like yellow. Praise the Lord. And this, uh, this person that can go now, he will be the one that will lead us in prayer. Eh? Can we begin to bind and cast and everything? He himself is already bound. And has already been casted. It's what we call purity of the heart. When your heart is pure. The pure heart is a heart that is open. Is it having your loins get about with what? Truth. And if you go to Peter, Peter mentioned the loins of your mind. Having your mind, he said, be you transformed by renewing what? Your mind. Get about with what? Truth. And what is truth? What God wants and how he wants it. Having your loins, get about with what God wants and how what? And how he wants it. Two men in the same generation, Jesus and John the Baptist. 
while John the Baptist was going into the wilderness, Jesus was staying where? Jesus was staying inside the city, right? How can they give birth to you that all your life you are going to be carrying camel's hair? You are going to be eating honey and locusts. You can't eat what every other person your, in everybody in your generation is eating. But truth is what God wants and what? How he wants it. If you don't get this understanding well, uh, this is how it is for everybody. This is not everybody. How he wants it exactly for you. He gave it to Samson. He said, What well, he shall not, he shall be a Nazarite, right? From what? From birth. What he wants for you and how what? He wants you. How many, in the, when they say the will of God, they want to marry now? Can you surrender to what God wants and how he wants it? Some are very smart now. I see Satan has finished his work in them. You see, uh, after man fell or something, that you go and look for a wife for yourself. He that finds a wife, finds a. You see, that finds a wife, finds what? If you can't find, you can't go look for yourself. God is not involved. You go and look. In other places, it can lead you, but when it comes to marrying a wife, you should not lead you. You, you lead yourself. Can we echo it again? Truth is what God wants. Truth is what God wants. And how He wants it. And how he wants it. The devil can fight you in two fronts here. It can be what you want. Eh? What you want. Or it can be what God wants, but how you, you want it. Can you see it? What God wants, but how, who, how you want it. You want it. You want it. So as we move further from here, as we journey from here, can we can we let this be the cry of our heart that the Holy Ghost will visit our heart, that our heart will be totally open to God, that God will become the fire, His truth, His ways, His light will be the fire that is burning inside. I won't speak beyond this. Just one I pick, having the weapons of our warfare. This one now, this truth now, this one you don't cast it on the enemy. This one you cast it on yourself. Truth. Where you pick the word of God and then you cast it on yourself. You cast the weight on yourself. That is what having your loins, your minds get about it. What? Truth. He said, You shall know the truth and the truth will set you free. He said, Thy word is what? Truth. Then he now talks about the, the sword of the spirit, which is the word of what? God. Yes. I'm stopping here tonight. Where you become a burning light. The truth of God is burning inside. It's a fire that is inside. His ways are burning in you. Abraham stood before uh, the king of Sodom, right? See the king that wants to give Abraham something. He said, take the goods and give me the men. Abraham gave him the goods. Gave him the men and gave him the goods. So I won't touch anything from you. I see Abraham knew that man. Amen. But that man was part of you that God destroyed inside that fire. If he's not a man that is consecrated to God's uh, Way, you know, if it's if it's the man that has covetousness, what will he do? She be spoiled of battle. You start quoting scripture. The spoils of battle. I went to battle. I fought. These things are now my own. In fact, the man say you even take them. The man say I will not take them. Take it. He said, lest you say that I have made Abraham what rich. Abraham stayed with God and His ways. See how these things work. Can we be patient? No, you are eager. Oh, God has not showed up yet. Uh, I have been waiting for this. I look as if it's slow. The Lord is slack concerning His promises. And uh, did this one? Uh, oh, Lord, Praise the Lord. Stand, therefore, having your loins get about with what? Truth. We say fire born. The word of God that you want to consume the nation as it consumed you. As it consumed you, can we allow it to burn inside? Burn inside your will. Born inside your heart until you become a whole burnt offering for God. You see these things? Can we pray? We pray. Father, we thank you. We'll be on our feet as we pray. Talk to your Father. Jesus, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And we'll become men and women that were living with the desires of God in our heart. What satisfies you? What satisfies your heart? Are the desires of God and your heart is satisfied before you even move further? Like God is using me, and then you get satisfied that His desire that the heart of God satisfies you. God tells you to God tell you to sit down there. Sitting down there, you are satisfied. Not until you sit down there, because you sit down there, you now saw a did this and like that. No, that you sat down there, you are satisfied. So my joy is to hear the voice of the bridegroom. You just hear his voice. Can we be that generation that all we want is him? 
then we can carry him to the nations. To our nations. The nations, the people that God has called you to influence and impact their life. Thank you. Father, thank you. I told us that fire is not selective. Set the conditions and fire will burn. Set the condition. Be that man. And you see the fire of the Holy Ghost burning. Be that woman. And you see the fire of the Holy Ghost burning. He said, To this man will I look. Did he call anybody's name? Eh? He did say to Nathaniel, will I look. He said to Abbe, will I look. He said, This man, become that man. And then you will see him. You will see the Shekinah. Ali, Ali, Ali. This is not quoting scriptures. It's beyond. You will quote scripture, but you will go further. Further. This is not saying revelation. You will say revelation, but you are walking in the light of what you are saying. You have embodied it. Having your loins get about the truth. Lies. Thou, that truth get about with you. That word will rise up from your heart, then it becomes his sword. When it's going out of you, the Bible says, out of his mouth proceeded a sharp sword. Thou get that when it enters your heart, your mind, it becomes true today. Get that when it's coming out of that place and it's going toward the direction of the enemy, it becomes his sword. Comes his sword. Sword is not when you see it in the Bible. You just take it. You are quoting it from inside the Bible. No. When it is rising from your heart. And it is going, I say, out of his mouth. Proceeded what sharp sword. Set the conditions and fire will burn. Fire is not selected. Fire will burn anywhere. Where conditions are right. Let the wood and God will send the fire. Let the wood and God will send the fire. God will not let the wood. God will not set the conditions. You set the conditions and God will burn. Fire will burn. A kata, a shabala, le bokoto, a bele kata, a koto, a bele kata, a koto, a bala kata. When you read scripture like this, Abraham departs. What did you hear next? And Abraham departed. Eh? Is that how you said the condition? Depart. Abraham did what? He departed. Abraham, then he was setting the conditions for fire. When he departed, what happened next? Pharaoh, a very powerful king, thought he had seen a weak man. Seen a weak man, took the wife. And then God showed up in the night. Set the conditions and fire will burn. Depart, Abraham departed. Thank you. Jesus, thank you. Go this way, and you go that way. You are setting the conditions for fire. Thank you. Jesus, thank you. Thank you. Another powerful king. Abimelech. God, after Abraham left Egypt, he said, God told him, dwell in this land. And he was dwelling in that land, another powerful king. He stretched forth his hand, then God showed, the most I showed up. God showed up. Because Abraham was, he said, depart, Abraham departed. Depart, you are not departing. Move, you are not moving. Do this, you are not doing it. And then you say, I will arise as like other times. You arise as other times, they will pour that to two eyes. Like Samson. Let me rise up as, as at other times. You are around to rise up as at other times. You have not done the things you did other times. Set the conditions. Fire will burn. All of us want God to burn in our lives. Born through us in our generation. <laughs> Set to the conditions, fire will burn. Fire is not selective. Le bokoto, 
Ibokoto, Akata, Ebelekete. You are a young man, your house is not con your house is not convenient. Go and stay under the tree for two days. Your house is not convenient. Young men. He said, I let on to you, young men, because you are what? You are strong. You know you are strong to contend with God. Right to a young man because you are strong and the word of God abide in you. You are staying under a tree for two days. You are there under that tree. If you are tired, if you are knocked down with sleep, you sleep there, you wake up again and you carry his word in your mouth. My father, here I am, use me. Here I am, use me. Purify my heart. Let my consecration be deep. Two days you are saying the same thing. In the days of Jesus Christ, in the days of Gethsemane, he went there, he said the same word. He came back, he went again. What did he do? He said the same word. He went again, he said the same word. Two days you have written up your hand. Oh God, you see. let me be your servant. Deep in my consecration. Two days you are saying it. Says, I don't know what to pray. Prayer is not the things you are saying in your mouth. Prayer is the frequency of your heart. It's the depth of your heart. You are saying the same word, but you are saying that God is hearing different things. The same word you are saying for the past one hour. A person who passed by you, they are hearing you repeat the same word one hour. They are saying, look at that foolish man. He doesn't know what he's saying. You are repeating the same word one uh, hundred times. But God is hearing the frequency of your heart. You see the water level is rising. You see your body is tearing apart. The same word you are saying it a hundred times. After you can't even say the word again because of the body in the heart. And I prayed she could not utter words again. What they say she's drunk. And I say she's drunk. I say I'm not too drunk. It is the body that cries in my heart. Young men and women are laughing about. Laughing about on social media. Laughing about on social media. And you will come and say, Oh God, you are my God. Ellie will I seek you. Ellie will I seek you when you have not sought him at all. Sought him at all. You locked yourself. Three days you have locked yourself there. Hunger, the hunger. Let me give you the good news. Let me give all the good news. Hunger doesn't kill. You lock yourself for three days. You are there. All the hunger. This hunger want to assassinate you. Let it assassinate you. And we rise again. You say accounting. Abraham say accounting that God was able to raise him from the dead, and he received the boy back in a figure. If one that kills you on the second day or the third day, you rise again. Lock yourself for three days. And then you are there with the most high God. Lifting up holy hands. That's when you remember, I need to call this person. You are not calling anyone. That's when you remember, oh, I didn't do this one. Oh, you should be remembering things. I said, Satan will sponsor desire inside. It's when you want to pray that you start remembering certain things. Let me quickly send this message. Oh, let me quickly call this person. When you are supposed to be moving inside the cloud of glory. As you want to take off, they will bring you back. You just, oh, I promise, I told the uh, Pastor Mecca that I'll give, I'll give him feedback. After, call the Pastor Mecca three days and give him feedback. Sorry, I, I, I wanted to call you, but I went into prayer. I was there for three days. Will he be angry with you? But as you are going, that's how you do that call. Before you know, let me send this uh, message. You see somebody's status. They posted something, you are watching it. After you watch it, before it will take you on that place. From there, you because when you wonder, 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 you come and land inside pornography. Because you are a wandering spirit. You know, the evil one knows where he wants to take you to. He will not take you there directly now. He will use other things. You will be following, you follow, then you land in there. You say, shut down. Complete shutdown between you and God. As busy as Daniel was, he said, In the morning, in the after three times, what you will lift up his window towards Jerusalem, even when the king has made a decree. Violate it will kill you. Nobody is even threatening you, you cannot even pray. What if there's not a threat? Eh? You are not yet being threatened yet. You say, Because of your job, my job is very demanding. All manner of excuse. If your job is demanding, you have a higher God is a higher demand. You say, give to see the beauty of the New Testament. You can give to God and give to Caesar. After you spend 12 hours on your job, go and spend six hours with God. The remaining six hours, spread, spread, spread it between, between every other thing you want to do. Let your body suffer, not your work with God should not suffer. 
He said that the king will suffer no loss. So he said, I cannot even come to fellowship because of their job. And everybody will just understand. You know, his job is very demanding. So since he's not available, let him be sending money. Your money perish with you. The money we are talking about here, uh, be be bringing the money. Can you bless him? Can you thank him? This is a new season in my life. We are contending for the faith that was once and for all delivered unto the saints. Contending for life. Jesus, thank you. Jesus, thank you. Jesus will bless you. We give you praise. We give you glory. We give you honor. We went into the blessing that he, 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 this hunger, a new hunger, new hunger, new fire. Father, take not much you can say here. But can we pray for us? We pray while we pray for us. Can we pray for the body of Christ? Can we pray for God's elect children all across the nations of the earth that our hearts will be genuine, our hunger will be real, will carry this fire. We ourselves become the, the wood. Then the fire of the Holy Ghost will burn inside. And burn through us. Father, thank you. To those fire is not selective. Anybody can burn. God can use anybody. He said, I sought for a man. He was looking for who to use. He said, I sought for a man. He went to A. A was not available. B. He went from A to Z. To X, Y, Z. He went to Z. He couldn't find any man. Any. Any. He was looking for any. Any that will be available. You see, I sought for a man, I found none. Kali Shabaka, Le Bokoto. I could pray. I could pray. Well, this is a global platform. I pray for the church. I pray for the nations of the world. Now we are supplicating our Father that the Lord help us. Mercy, Lord, help us. Extend mercy. Extend mercy. We as men and women that are awake to life and to our responsibility in you. Father, thank you. Esha Bolote, Melekata, Le Bokoto, Abba Lekata, Ekata, Ekata, Melekata, Lisha Balakata, Ekoto Lisha Belekata, Melekata. Our hearts will burn deep into God. Thank you. Where the Sami should be looking for water, he was looking for God. Looking for God in my flesh. Longs for you. Where I should be looking for water. In a dry and thirsty land where there is no water. Where our hunger for God is superior to every other hunger that we have. David wanted to be the king of Israel, but his hunger for God was superior to be a, than to be a king. That's why when that temptation came, that temptation could not take him. Because he had a superior hunger. He wanted to be a king. He was anointed to be a king. David comported himself as Israel's king. Look at his psalmist. He said, The king, uh, how did he put it? This time 20 now, 21 now. The way David addresses himself as the king. He wanted to be the king. After that anointing came on him. But his hunger to be the king was inferior to his hunger for God. So when they had the opportunity to kill King Saul and, be, and kill King Saul and became, become king, he couldn't take it. He didn't have the strength to take that option. You see, he has that are consecrated that deep and sold out for God. Even in the day of temptation and trial, they will not fall. Even if they want to, but the strength will not be there. The strength to hit the commitment button, that strength will not be there. That's how hard and how high, high and deep our heart must travel. Thank you. Thank you. Jesus, thank you. Father will bless you. She le kata, le bokoto, abala kata, le bokoto, mbolo koto, be kata, le she be le kata, ma kata, i kaka li she be le kata, le bokoto, mbaba kata. Father, thank you. Thank you for the blessing. Fire in our bosom, fire in our hearts, reflecting in the things we do and in the things that we say. I'll lift up our two hands as we pray. In Jesus' name. Father God, thank you. Thank you for these uh, past days and these past years that will be standing on this global platform of 
worship, intercession, and governmental decrees. Thank you for the strength to do it again and again. Thank you because each time we do it, we come forth with a new strength to do more. You renew our strength like the eagle. And so we do it while looking forward to do more. Thank you for renewing our strength. Thank you for hearts that burn. Thank you for a new flame in our hearts. We give you praise and we give you glory. Our Father, we love you. We continue to love you. We are strengthened in your love and in your holy name. In your great name. Thank you for your elect children all over the world. Thank you for a new desire for you. For new bodies in our heart for you. Thank you for hearts that we carry you. Hearts that will be hungry for you beyond every other thing else. Our oh, Father, thank you. Thank you for you have loved us with everlasting love. And with loving kindness, you draw us to yourself day by day. Our oh, Father God, thank you. In Jesus' name. Thank you. God bless you.